Destructive as it appears at first glance, rubbleizing is a resource-saving method of upgrading many of our roadways. This procedure turns old pavements into bases for new hot-mix asphalt pavements, referred to as HMA. Rubbleizing is the in-place shattering of a reinforced or non-reinforced Portland cement concrete pavement to construct a rubbleized base. Rubbleizing reduces the concrete to particles of a size and shape that can be compacted to form a firm, dense base. A good base will give us a good road. MDOT allows two different types of equipment for rubbleizing concrete pavements, a resonant frequency pavement breaker and a multi-headed guillotine breaker known as an impact breaker. Some common characteristics and features of each machine and operational procedures will be presented. This video program will show the preparations for rubbleizing, materials and equipment used, and the construction steps and related inspection concerns, including documentation. Keep in mind that, as with any construction job, the work is governed by the contract documents, the special provisions, specifications, and plans. You'll need to get familiar with the contract documents before the project gets underway and refer to them often as the work progresses. To give a quick overview of the construction steps, there first are a number of preliminary operations. There's the setup of traffic controls, drainage work, shoulder work, and concrete sawing that must be done. Next comes the rubbleizing procedure, which depends on the type of equipment being used and its final results, verified by quality control checks. Then there's the removal of joint filler, expansion material, and patching material from the existing pavement and filling depressions from these operations with filler aggregates. Compaction of the rubbleized pavement then takes place through a series of roller passes. You'll have some inspection responsibilities for rubbleizing and other operations leading up to the paving of HMA layers over the finished rubbleized base. Your responsibilities as an inspector on rubbleizing projects focus on ensuring that the materials, equipment, work methods, and work itself are as specified in the contract. Toward that end, you must check, measure, observe, mark, document, and otherwise verify that everything is done correctly and safely. Your first preparation is to study the contract proposal, the special provisions, supplemental specifications, project plans and drawings, standard plans, and standard specifications for rubbleizing Portland cement concrete pavement. Check and compare plan quantities and locations with actual field conditions. Review the staging layout in the plans and proposal. If a special provision pertains to the pavement drainage system, it must be completely installed and functioning, including the outlet endings, before rubbleizing begins. Typically, a preformed geotextile drain is installed along the edges of the existing concrete pavement. Likewise, the shoulder work and any widening should have progressed to match the elevation of the adjacent pavement to be rubbleized. These areas can then be relied on to support the pavement breaker as it rubbleizes the concrete and also to maintain traffic when required. Another requirement is that saw cuts be made where the rubbleizing will begin and end. This is to protect the concrete pavement adjoining the sections to be rubbleized. 
when that abutting pavement is to remain in place or be removed for other purposes, either a relief joint has to be saw cut full depth or load transfer devices have to be severed at existing joints. Remove any pavement designated by the plans or directed by the engineer over utilities or pipes with less than one and a half feet of granular material cover. This removal area should be backfilled with filler aggregate, maximum six inch lift, and thoroughly compacted. Some jobs require removal of the asphalt surface by milling down to the concrete before rubbleization. Traffic controls and project staging must be set up according to the maintaining traffic of the special provision in the proposal or project plans. Throughout the project, you'll need to ensure that traffic is properly maintained. And those are the key preparations for rubbleizing. Rubbleizing reduces the non-reinforced PCC, Portland Concrete Cement Pavement, to unbound particles with a nominal diameter of less than 8 inches, so it will function as an unbound aggregate base. Any oversized particles for non-reinforced or reinforced that can be detected at the surface are further reduced in size or removed and replaced with filler aggregate. If reinforcement is present, the overall dimension for particles above are further reduced in size, ranging from 2 inches to 5 inches. Sporadic particles exceeding 10 inches are allowable below the reinforcement if debonding of the reinforcement in the vicinity of the particles is verified. Let's take a closer look at the rubbleizing machine. The special provision describes it as a self-contained, self-propelled, resonant frequency pavement braking unit. Two types of equipment may be used to rubbleize the pavement. The first type is a self-contained, self-propelled pavement braking machine that uses a resonant frequency to produce a low amplitude braking force, approximately 1800 to 2200 pound force blows, at an impact rate of not less than 44 blows per second. This resonant rubbleizer operates at a forward speed ranging from 2 to 4 miles per hour. This high frequency action of the shoe not only breaks up the concrete but also separates it from the reinforcement, leaving the steel in an unbonded condition. Worn shoes will prevent the machine from breaking up the concrete properly. They should be replaced as they wear down. Rubbleizing produces dust. The specification requires that an approved watering system is used. The manufacturer of the pavement breaker attaches resonation decals to the machine to show when the resonant frequency is correct. When the resonance is correct, the two designs seem to converge. Experience has shown that when using the resonant frequency breaker shoe, rubbleizing should begin at the free edge of the pavement, in other words, at the shoulder. This permits better breaking up of the concrete than if the unit worked from the inside out. But whichever type of equipment is used, rubbleization of one and a half feet past center line is required. The second type of equipment that MDOT allows is a multi-headed guillotine impact breaker. This is a self-contained, self-propelled pavement braking machine with multiple impact hammers directly adjacent to each other. Each hammer is capable of lifting and falling in an independent, adjustable, random sequence and to vary the force of impact.
Each individual hammer must not exceed 1,200 pounds in weight, except wing hammer weights, maximum 1,500 pounds. The breaking width can vary from 2.5 to 12.5 feet. The number of hammers and their spacing arrangement may vary depending on the desired width of each rubbleizing pass. The impact breaker operates at a forward speed ranging from 500 to 800 feet per hour. The vibratory grid roller is a piece of equipment that follows the impact breaker in rubbleizing the pavement to specification size. The specification requires the use of an approved watering system to suppress dust generated from the pavement shattering. At the initiation and during rubbleizing, the contractor establishes, demonstrates, and documents the proper operating characteristics of the equipment, including specifically the machine's speed and impact frequency, to achieve the specified results. The pavement breaker's working speed is one factor in producing the desired particle sizes. The contractor should run a test strip to determine the working speed to achieve optimum breaking results. As part of the acceptance criteria, ensuring that the pavement is properly rubbleized, you need to observe that the operator covers the surface completely and continuously. Make sure that the breaker shoe or impact hammers overlaps the previous pass a minimum of one inch to prevent slivers of unbroken concrete between the passes. This is an important concern of rubbleizing. If left unrubbleized, these slivers will later cause cracks in the HMA pavement quality. There will always be a few oversized pieces of broken pavement that will have to be removed from the surface pieces six inches or more in their largest dimension. Acceptance criteria requires that the PCC pavement be completely shattered full depth in a uniform manner by rubbleizing. The following criteria is used by the engineer to determine whether the work is acceptable. The reinforcement, if present, shall be debonded from the concrete to allow the pavement to function as an unbound aggregate base. At a minimum frequency of once per lane, per three-tenths of a mile, the contractor inspects the rubbleized pavement to determine whether the reinforcement is debonded and the specified particle size has been achieved. The removal of rubbleized material above the reinforcement is done only by manual methods so as not to further break the pavement particles. Once verification is completed, mechanized equipment may be used to facilitate any work. Inspection sites are restored with filler aggregate and compacted. The engineer may adjust the inspection frequency depending on their results. All exposed reinforcement at the surface is removed by cutting it off below the surface. Embedded reinforcement may remain in place. Always watch for exposed steel and mark it with spray paint so that the contractors can't overlook it. Of course, the contractor's personnel should look for and mark it too. Here and there, some of it will stick up above the surface, either during the rubbleizing or during the rolling operation, and will have to be cut off and removed from the site. See to it that the exposed steel is cut off below the surface, removed from the roadway, and properly discarded. Multiple passes of the rubbleizing machine are allowable to achieve the specified criteria. 
This is to eliminate the possibility of reflective cracking through the HMA pavement from any cracks having a nominal width of one half inch at the surface or from joints that are no longer distinguishable. The engineer may limit the number of additional passes or request adjustments be made to the rubbleizing equipment if the underlying base or subgrade is being displaced. Concrete pavement patches, if present, are rubbleized as specified. It's difficult to rubbleize undoweled patches, soft subgrade, or voids beneath the pavement. You can tell where these problems are located because the breaker shoe sinks into the concrete. Work with additional equipment and hand tools may be required. Here a pavement settlement is brought up to specified grade with filler aggregate. Some rubbleizing jobs encounter areas that require subgrade undercutting caused by existing soil conditions. These areas are removed and backfilled with materials specified. After rubbleizing, but prior to compaction, all loose joint materials, including any expansion filler and HMA material, are removed. Any resulting voids are to be filled with filler aggregate and compacted. Because we are trying to achieve a uniform aggregate layer, these materials can create weak or defective spots in the HMA courses. The important thing is that these materials not end up in contact with the HMA courses when they're placed over the rubbleized pavement. The holes left by removing these pieces, as well as the depressions resulting from the rubbleizing, have to be filled in with aggregate specified. The filler aggregate used must meet the requirements of the standard specifications or as specified in the proposal. The quantity of filler aggregate, LM, shall be measured before placement and compaction. The unit price of filler aggregate, LM, shall include the cost of producing, delivering, placing, leveling, and compacting the aggregate at required locations in the rubbleized pavement. The completed finished surface shall have a uniform appearance without unbroken strips of pavement, exposed reinforcement, or visible joint filler and HMA patching material. With the rubbleizing completed, it's time for compaction. The entire width of rubbleized pavement has to be uniformly compacted by both vibratory steel wheeled and pneumatic tire rollers. Special provision requires that each roller have a nominal gross weight of not less than 10 tons. A rolling sequence is specified. One pass with a vibratory steel wheel roller One pass with a pneumatic tire roller. And two passes with a vibratory steel wheel roller again. Each pass is defined as down and back in the same path. The first pass is made by a vibratory steel wheel roller. The vibratory rollers should be operated in the maximum vibration mode. Watch for complete coverage. Again, one pass is down and back in the same path. So the roller should actually cover every part of the rubbleized pavement twice. At this stage of the operation, it's a good idea for you to walk the length of the job and inspect the surface closely. Keep an eye out for three things. One of them is exposed reinforcing steel. Although steel that was exposed by the rubbleizing should have been removed before now, the vibratory roller may expose more steel. If you find any, mark it. Then see that the contractor cuts it off properly and removes it from the job site. Another thing to look for is oversized pieces of concrete. All such pieces that were right at the surface following the rubbleizing should have been removed before now. But some may be just below the surface and are harder to find. The steel wheel rollers can make it easier to detect them. Just look carefully for isolated areas of fine particles that are uniformly sized. 
Such areas with the fine particles are often caused by the roller crushing aggregate particles at the surface against oversized chunks of pavement that lie just beneath the surface. Sweep away the fine particles and you'll typically find a large flat chunk of pavement that was not sufficiently rubbleized. Mark it so that it can either be removed or be broken into proper size pieces by the contractor before further rolling takes place. The third thing to look for is low areas that either weren't detected following the rubbleizing or were created by the vibratory compaction or by the removal of oversized pieces of concrete. All depressions one inch or deeper than the immediate surrounding areas are corrected by placing filler aggregate, striking it off level with the adjacent surface, and compacting it with the same rollers and compactive effort used for the rest of the rubbleized pavement. Now look for and correct such defects after the first roller pass has helped reveal them. Then the second roller pass is made by a pneumatic tire roller, minimum 10 ton, operated at no more than six feet per second and making one complete pass over the entire width of rubbleized pavement. The third roller pass can be made again with the vibratory steel wheel roller. When required to aid in compaction, water must be uniformly applied just before the third roller pass at a maximum rate of six units per mile. The fourth and last roller pass is not made until the same day as the HMA paving begins. Trucks delivering hot mix asphalt to the paver often displace the rubbleized concrete pavement so this last pass is to ensure compaction just before overlaying. In fact, the steel wheel roller should operate as close as possible to the front of the truck that's dumping into the paver. Vehicular traffic will not be allowed on the rubbleized pavement before the HMA pavement is placed, unless exceptions are required to maintain traffic. Portions of the rubbleized pavement used for cross road or ramp traffic shall be maintained in a compacted state. Immediately prior to placing HMA pavement, the surface is inspected for any unseated, rubbleized material. Any particles found are to be removed from the paving area. Check the special provision limits for the time between rubbleizing the segments, as shown on the plans, and placing the initial HMA course. If rain falls, however, this limitation may be waived to give the rubbleized pavement enough time to dry, to the satisfaction of the engineer. Any widening or shoulder work can now be completed in conjunction with the placement of HMA pavement courses over the compacted rubbleized pavement. Documentation. The recording of the essential facts describing the contractor's work and your inspection of it on the inspector's daily report form. MDOT uses the software program Fieldbook Inspector Daily Report, IDR. Be sure to record all the required information, especially the pay items rubbleized pavement by the square yard, filler aggregate, LM by the cubic yard, and water in 1,000 gallon units. Describe the work in terms of what was done, its location, and the quantity. Also record the material used, item number, description, and quantity. And add the other required information. But it is very important to document the work completely and accurately on the inspector's daily report form. This completes the presentation on rubbleizing, turning old concrete pavements into new aggregate bases and upgrading Michigan's highways.